Good evening and welcome to Evening Prayer on this Monday, the 9th of November. My name is Jim Gary. I'm an honorary associate at the Church of the Ascension in London, Ontario. On this November 9th, a couple of things of great significance took place, and both of them in Germany. Uh, on November 9th of 1938, what was called Kristallnacht took place. Uh, the uh, German troops and soldiers and uh, police uh, hit the homes and the businesses of many Jewish people, smashing windows, smashing uh, uh, glasses and whatever they could, thus the name of Kristallnacht from the sound of the breaking glass. It was one of those steps that drew Germany closer to the uh, Second World War and to the deaths of so many Jewish people. But on 1989 in Berlin, Germany, began the opening of the Berlin Wall. After the uh, Second World War, uh, Germany had been partitioned into zones. The uh, Allied zones became West Germany. The uh, Eastern zone, the Russian zone, became East Germany. And then the East German sector of Berlin was separated by walls. And uh, it was such an amazing day and uh, uh, led then to the eventual reunification of Germany. So those two things in 1938. We observe in, uh, on November 9th, 1938 and 1989. We are observing Monday as Memory Monday and using the Book of Common Prayer. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord, the Lord's name be praised. Today we will be using Psalm 46. God is our hope and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth be changed, and though the hills be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof rage and swell, and though the mountains shake at the tempest of the same. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. There is a city, the streams whereof make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her, therefore shall she not be moved. God shall help her, and that right early. The nations make much ado, and the kingdoms are moved. But God uttereth his voice, and the earth doth not melt away. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. O oh, come hither, and behold the works of the Lord, what wonders he hath brought upon the earth. He maketh wars to cease in all the world. He breaketh the bow, and snappeth the spear asunder, and burneth the chariots in the fire. Be still then, and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations, and I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. This is a beautiful psalm reading as we find ourselves in, in those days between our Remembrance Sunday and Remembrance Day itself. And this beautiful verse, He maketh wars to cease in all the world. He breaketh the bow and snappeth the spear asunder and burneth the chariots in fire. A uh, beautiful word of hope in this time as we also hear of the city of our God. And now we go back to our reading from the book of Revelation. This image, this vision that occurred to John on Patmos, and today we are reading the fifth chapter. You remember that in the fourth chapter, the door to heaven had been opened. John had been able to peer in. He saw this great being on the throne, and now we read more. Then I saw in the right hand of the one seated on the throne a scroll written on the inside and on the back, sealed with seven seals. And I saw a mighty, mighty angels proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the scroll and break its seals? And no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look into it. And I began to weep bitterly, because no one was found to worship, worthy to open the scroll and look into it. Then one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. See, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has conquered so that he can open the scroll in its seven seals. Then I saw between the throne and the four living creatures 
and among the elders, a lamb standing as if it had been slaughtered, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. He went and took the scroll from the right hand of the one who was seated on the throne. When he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell before the Lamb, each holding a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. They sing a new song. You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, for you were slaughtered, and by your blood you ransomed for God saints from every tribe and language and people and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests serving our God, and they will reign on earth. Then I looked, and I heard the voice of many angels surrounding the throne, and the living creatures and the elders. They numbered myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands, singing with a full voice, worthy as a lamb that was slaughtered to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea and all that is in them singing to the one seated on the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. And the four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshipped. This is beautiful and powerful imagery. We see this number seven appearing, seven seals upon the scroll, seven being a perfect number, and the scroll was perfectly sealed. Uh, many societies have those numbers that are special, and in the ancient Near East, seven was one of those numbers considered perfect. In our contemporary time, seven is seen as a lucky number. Interestingly, 13 is seen as an unlucky number, some have said because there were 13 seated at the table of the Last Supper, the 12 disciples and Jesus. Our Chinese friends have other numbers that are considered lucky or unlucky, and the value of a home can rise or fall considerably simply because of the numbers on its address. The next time you are able to fly, whenever that may be, look at the numbers on your airplane. Most airplanes skip the number 12. And many office buildings and hotels skip, skip, skip to number 13, going right from 12 to 14. And the same with many hotels and office buildings, because so many people have this fear of the number 13. In the same way, we see 7 is a lucky number, a perfect number. But who is worthy to open this scroll, scroll written on both the inside and the outside, to see what its contents might be? Perhaps it is a look into the future as to what may be. And as we go further into the book of Revelation, we will see powerful and yet fearful images of what might come. But as we look at each of these, we must remember they are images, heavenly images, but used in earthly language. It is very difficult to describe that which is indescribable when you are limited by your language on earth. And so John came the closest he could. And why would this one first called the lion of the tribe of Judah, and then we see that the lion has become a lamb? One of those many reversals. Remember that Jesus said uh, that the last shall be first and the first shall be last. And so we have that variation. And this lion of Judah is worthy, but it's a lamb. It is a lamb standing as if it had been slaughtered. And we remember that Jesus was slaughtered. He did give his life on the cross for us. And this lamb has seven horns and seven eyes, the perfect number once again. The seven being a sign of purity, the seven spirits of God. Seven being also a number of power. Seven horns would represent a very powerful being, a perfect being. And the lamb was worthy. And the lamb went and took the scroll from the one seated on the throne. And when he had done so, the four living creatures and the 24 hour elders took holding a harp and golden bowls full of incense, incense representing the prayers of the saints. And it reminds us of that verse, my prayer shall rise before the Lord like incense. 
the sweet smelling prayers of God's people. And they gather around and they say, the lamb is worthy. The lamb who was slain is worthy to open the seals. The lamb who has ransomed the world by his blood. A beautiful sight, a beautiful sight in somewhat strange language to us, but this amazingly wonderful vision that John had of a scroll being opened up, a scroll that says that the people will be saved, the people will be made free, and they gather around, myriads and myriads, thousands beyond count, giving praise to God and singing to the one seated on the throne, be blessing and honor and glory and might. It reminds us of beautiful music that we know and we have heard. Uh, in many traditions, uh, uh, in the Lutheran, the Roman Catholic, the Presbyterian, our Episcopal friends in the States, there's this magnificent hymn. This is the feast of victory. Worthy is a lamb who was slain, who sitteth sit on the throne. Just magnificent. After you've seen this video, Simply look up. Most of the references use the initial line, this is the feast, and just listen to a few of those and their power and their majesty picked up from this book of Revelation. There is so much that has come from music and literature and art from this book, written sometime after the year 90 in the Common Era, some dated even into the 120, 130 range, probably the last book of the Bible to be written and not even accepted into the canon until sometime in the early 4th century. But its imagery is so powerful, such a magnificent end to our Holy Scripture. And we will be continuing to dwell into this during the rest of this month. But now we will turn again to our prayers. O oh, Almighty and merciful God, Thy bountiful, of thy bountiful goodness keep us, we beseech thee, from all things that may hurt us, that we, both being ready, both in body and soul, may cheerfully accomplish those things that thou wouldest have done. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. And now, in the language and form of our choosing, we offer up that prayer our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. And do thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and evermore mightily defend us. O God, make cleaner hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. O God, for whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works do proceed, give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness through the merits of Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Lighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night, for the love of thy only Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Now we pause, pause for a moment of silence for you to offer up your petitions. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and that promise, does promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, that will grant their request. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting to us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, 
Keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And may the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you and those you love and those you would pray for, now and forever. Amen. Go now in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.